Not knowing the truth will hurt you even if you're saved, even if you're saved. And um, I just want to help some people out tonight. I want to help us get, you know, get in shape, get on the right track, get on this on, on the right mindset in order for us to see the things that the Lord wants us to see. Amen. So let me just allow a few more people to jump on this live. So I'm going to give them a few, a few moments, a few seconds. Uh, so just hold on a few seconds here. Let's see who, who we have on here. Drinking some coffee right now, getting ready to to deliver this this quick message to you guys. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Everybody doing good? Go ahead and comment on the comment section if if you're on here, so I can know you're on here, and um, so we can uh, interact here tonight. Hey, what's up, Emily? Bless you. Good to see you, Emily. Good to see you. So I see a few people are on here. So let's go ahead and begin. Uh, I want this to help you guys, okay? Not knowing the truth will hurt you even if you're saved. So if you're like me, you've heard people say things like what you don't know won't hurt you or can't hurt you, right? And a lot of us know that um, in Christ as a Christian, as a follower of Jesus, that's kind of the other way around. It's it's quite the opposite, right? He God, he wants us to know the truth. Jesus said, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free, right? So freedom comes from knowing something, right? Knowing something, knowing a message, the message of God that what, who Jesus brought. And then the same message he preached and taught and proclaimed through his apostles in the beginning, right? So there's a message that we have to know, right? And it says that knowing this will help us get freedom and liberty. Um, we know in the Old Testament, we know a scripture that says uh, that God's people perished for the lack of knowledge, right? God's people. See, right now I'm talking to the saints. I'm talking to believers, the Christians, Christian brothers and sisters on here on Facebook Live, because um, a lot of times we think that you know, the only ignorant ones are the ones in the world or the ones in darkness or the lost ones, the unbelievers, the unsaved, quote unquote, the sinner, right? Um, but unfortunately, a lot of us who are saved, who have believed in the Lord and have been saved by grace, a lot of us are also ignorant of God's truth. Uh, we're, all, we're even ignorant of who we are in Christ. We're even ignorant of what Christianity itself is is and that's strange that's that's pretty weird that's crazy right so I, I want you to think about that real quick i miss you too emily miss you guys miss you guys everybody just continue to hop on here let's have a a good conversation um go ahead and share this video if you're watching right now um so that more people could jump on some of your friends could jump on and be encouraged and blessed by this word tonight okay um so I hope you're thinking about what I just said. There's a lot of believers who are also ignorant, not just unbelievers, not just the sinners, not just the unsaved, but the saved are very ignorant nowadays. In the Old Testament, it says that God said about his people that many perished for the lack of knowledge. Uh, in other words, for ignorance, for not knowing. You know, I'm, you see what I'm saying here? So that relates to us here tonight. It relates to believers all around the world. There's a lot of stuff going on in the world right now. I'm pretty sure we are all aware of it. And uh, it's negative, right? It's sad. It's tough. It's trying. Um, but listen, we got to remember what's going to get us out of a lot of this emotional, doubtful, fearful attitudes that a lot of us Christians have that we are not supposed to have, whether we like it or not. So let's get let's get into that, that, that train of thought. Let's get into that mindset right now, okay? I'm drinking this coffee so I can give you this word. I'm gonna give you this word right now. Okay? It's gonna be a short word. So let's let's think about that. My people perish for the lack of knowledge. So a lot of us might say well, I've come to Christ. I have the knowledge of the Lord. I've been saved. And God is saying, hold up, hold up. There's 
something that the new you has to do. The Bible says that the new man, right, aka you and I, we are renewed in knowledge according to the image of him, right, who created us. The Bible says that the new man is that the new man is renewed in the spirit of his mind, in his mind. The Bible says that transformation, right, aka a change of action, a change of lifestyle, a change of fruit, a change of conduct, of behavior, a change of works, just a change of your whole life. It says in Romans 12 that it comes by the renewing of your mind. Now, if you know and I know that our minds are those things that contain knowledge, right? It contains memory, right? It contains experiences and, and, and thoughts and opinions, right? It contains everything that drives our life. Think of your mind as the steering wheel and think of your body and your life as the car. Your mind tells your body how to act, how to move, where to go, even your mouth what to say. You guys understand that, right? So a lot of people think that the problem Hey, Dora. Hello, Dora. Hey, baby. I see my wife is on here. What's up, baby girl? <laughs> so a lot of people think that the problem, that the problem is your mouth, you know, because the, the, the Bible talks about the, the tongue and how powerful and destructive it is. But we have to understand that your mouth can't say anything and your body can't do anything unless your mind tells it to do so or your mind allows it to do so. Do you see what I'm saying here? That's why the Bible says that by the spirit of God that is in us, we can put to death the deeds of the flesh because it says those who walk according to the spirit set their what? Their minds on the things of the spirit. So if we have our minds set on something that it should be set on, we're going to act the way we need to act on or act according to, right? So I say all that to say the importance should be placed in your thoughts, in your mind, your mindset, the state of your mind, your perspective about God, your perspective about Christianity, your perspective about life. H how is your thinking? Has it been renewed? What have you learned in the last, not only year or month, what have you learned in this last week about the Lord, about the word of God? What have you learned? What have you been putting in your mind? Because it's so important, guys. It's so important. Not knowing the truth will hurt you even if you're saved because God's people perish for the lack of knowledge because transformation comes by the renewing of the mind because the new man is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him because the Bible says put on the new man, put on the put off the old man, right? The Bible says that we must come to the knowledge of what? Of the truth. It says continue in the doctrine of the apostles, right? It says, and you shall know the truth and you shall be set free. So a lot of us are not seeing freedom, especially this week and in the couple of weeks past, we're not seeing a freedom that the Bible promises that we'll have. We're not seeing a freedom of stress. We're not seeing freedom of, of fear. We're not seeing freedom of doubt. We're not seeing freedom of anxiety or worry. A lot of us are not seeing freedom of, 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 of sickness or illness. Unfortunately, why? Because we have to know something, guys. We have to know something. God wants us to be free from fear because that's not the type of spirit he's put in us. You know, and I know he's put his own spirit, the Holy Spirit, and he is not a spirit of fear as many of us have known, have heard, and have quoted the scripture. He's given us a spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind, right? Peaceful mind, mind of, of soundness, a mind that's sober, a mind that's clear, that's focused, and that has self-control, self-discipline, okay? So we have to understand first and foremost that we have been born again and that we have entered a covenant with the living God, not a fake God, not a false God, not an idol who is mute, who is blind, and who is deaf. Our God is alive. He speaks. He sees. He cannot be mocked. You can't hide from him. You can't trick him or deceive him. And who hears, okay? He's the all-knowing God, right? Omniscient, all-knowing, everywhere present, omnipresent, almighty or all-powerful, omnipot omnipotent, right? All right? Omnipotency, omnipotent, omnipower, right? So listen, that's the God that we have 
joined in covenant with. He has made a covenant with us through Christ. That's the biggest and the first truth we have to get through to you tonight. You are in covenant with the true and living God. The same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The same God who was in the beginning in Genesis created everything. Okay? The same God who put Noah and his sons and their wives in that boat as the whole earth got destroyed. Same God. <laughs> okay? Same God is the same God, the same God who destroyed those unrighteous people, the same God who saved the righteous Noah. That's the same God we serve tonight. Are you guys following? Are you, are you, are you guys catching on what I'm saying? Let's connect the dots with that. That's the first truth we got to know tonight, that we are in covenant with God and it's the same God who has been around since forever because in the beginning, he already was. He's self-existent, eternal. He created all things, okay? So let's get that first and foremost. We are in covenant with the Lord, amen? This coffee is good. Who, who else is drinking coffee? Let me know if you're drinking coffee right now. I want you to comment on here if you're drinking coffee because my coffee is good. My coffee is good. All right. So we are in covenant with the Lord, right? We are in covenant with the Lord. So what does that mean? Well, we have to get into the word, guys, and we have to find out what this new covenant is because it's, 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 it's a covenant that's not mysterious. The Bible talks about the type of covenant we're in with God. <laughs> It's a better covenant. It's a new covenant. And what kind of promises, what kind of blessings does it bring? It says that it redeems us from the curses of the law. And we can read what those curses of the law are in the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 27, 28. We can see those curses and we can also see the blessings of being obedient to God's law. Okay. So, so you have to get into the knowledge, guys. Like we got to get the knowledge of what co covenant we're in with God. We are in the new covenant. Paul said that he and in, in the, in the apostles that he was talking about in, in, in um, in second Corinthians, Paul said that he would, they were given the ministry of the new covenant, right? That's the ministry Paul was given. And Paul wrote a whole lot of letters, a whole lot of uh, instructions, a whole lot of chapters and books in the New Testament that is meant for us to learn and live by. So Paul wrote so much of the New Testament and it says that he was given the ministry of the new covenant I think it's so important for us to understand what the new covenant is, what it brings, what it provides, what it frees us from, what, how it protects us. Okay. It may, we got to understand that guys. We have to understand that we are in covenant with the same God from Genesis to Revelation. It's the same God. The covenant changes. It's a different covenant, but it's the same, same God, same God, different covenant, different covenant, same God. That's the guy. That's the Lord. That's the creator we are in covenant with. And the Bible says that he protects us. He keeps us that it, the Bible says that we shall be healed, that he is our healer and that we are redeemed from the curses of the law. And in the curses of the law, you see destruction, right? You see pestilence, you see sickness, you see a whole lot of negative, destructive things, dark things that come upon people of disobedience. But in the New Testament, it says that because we're under the new covenant and we have been redeemed from the curses of the law, that those things don't come upon us because we're not the sons of disobedience. We are justified, redeemed, and we are now sons of God. The Bible states that those outside of Christ living for themselves are enemies of God. And the Bible says that we, along with the ministry of the new covenant, we have the ministry of reconciliation, right? Because we ourselves have been reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. So by faith in Christ, right? By repenting, right? By coming to the Lord, turning from our sins, believing in Christ, we were forgiven of our sins. We received the indwelling presence of the spirit, became new creations, were born again, became sons of God. And guess what that means? We are now, the Bible says, at peace with God, not enemies of God, at peace with God. 
Okay, so we have to understand where we're, where we're at here and what covenant we're in because a lot of Christians, I see so many Christians being, being scared of the things that enemies of God are scared of. Expecting the things that enemies of God are expecting. Running away from the things that enemies of God are running away from. But the Bible says we're at peace with God. We're no longer enemies. The Bible says that we're not outside of God. We are in covenant with God and he's given us new covenant promises, blessings through Christ. Do you guys, does that make sense to you guys? Do you guys understand that the Bible says that we are blessed with believing Abraham? And that means that all that means is that the promises that God gave to Abraham seed is the, is the promises that we have because Abraham's seed are those in Christ. The seed was Christ. Does that make sense? So this is what Christianity is. Christianity is being in covenant with God and being blessed by God. Does that make sense to everybody? I, I want If you're watching, I want you to comment. Let me know if this makes sense to you, okay? And also, if you think this is helpful, if this is making sense, if you think this will help somebody, I want you to share this video too, okay? Let me know. So God's people are in covenant with him. God's people are blessed by him. God's people are not prone or vulnerable to the things that enemies of God are prone to or vulnerable to. So if we know this, guess what? We shall be set free from the fear, from the expectancy of those things that God has saved us from, right? God's people perish for the lack of knowledge because when you don't understand what God has given you, when you don't understand what covenant you're in, you're going to fear things you're not supposed to fear. And what happens when you walk in fear? Same thing that happens when you walk in faith. You see the manifestation of your expectation. Let me say that again. What happens when you walk in fear? The same thing that happens when you walk in faith. You see the manifestation of your expectation. Amen? Does that make sense? Just like Job. Job said that what he feared the most came upon him, happened in his life. And in the beginning of the book of Job, we see what he feared the most. It was what he thought about the most, which was his kids being in trouble, his kids being judged by God, his kids receiving wrath upon themselves, his kids not being right with God. So he, you know, worshiped and made offerings for them and, and did things and sacrifices for them in case they had disobeyed the Lord some way, somehow. So he feared that. And guess what? It happened. So in these times, God, that guys, that so many negative and, 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 and unfortunate things are happening in the world. I, I want you guys to, to start digging into the word. Start investing in knowing the truth because God's people perish for the lack of knowledge. If you are afraid of these things, and you're, if you're walking in fear of sickness, of disease, of pestilence, if you're walking in fear of the devil, if you're walking in fear of destruction, if you're, if you're walking in fear of dying early, unless it's for being a martyr, there's some truth for you to know. You got to renew your mind, guys. We can't be thinking like the world and expect to see things differently from the world than, than the world. Amen. If, if, if we're, if we're in Christ, guys, we have life in us. We have the spirit of life in us and we are under the law of the spirit of life and we are under grace and we are in the new covenant with God and he has enabled and empowered us to live a certain way and he has given us promises and blessings, right? Through this covenant that we can now believe and expect and be at peace. See, the Bible says, that we are not to worry when all these horrendous, horrible things are happening around us. We can see them happening. And even Psalm says that we're going to see them happen, but it's going to be happening to the unjust, to the unrighteous, to the wicked. It's, it, it says that only with our eye will we see the reward of the wicked. But only with our eye. That means only with, with, our, with our vision will we experience them. But we won't really experience them ourselves because those things happen to the wicked. So, so, so we need to understand God's protection, God's deliverance, God's healing, God's blessing and promise in the new covenant for us through Christ. So that we can stop being afraid and expecting the things that are not supposed to happen to us. 
Amen. No evil shall befall you. No plague shall come near your dwelling. If you're not continually meditating on this truth, you might start expecting these things happening to you. And even if they're happening to the world, it's not something that should influence you because we're supposed to be getting our minds renewed with the truth of God, with the ways of God, so that we can start expecting the things God wants for us. And if we're living right, if we're in covenant with God, then there's no wrath. There's no judgment, right? There's there, there's no, none of those things that the Bible says are for, are meant for the sons of disobedience, right? People who brought wrath upon themselves, judgment upon themselves, people that are enemies of God outside of covenant with God. Okay, so if we're living right, if we're following the Lord, if we're in covenant with God, and if we are, then this is your wake up call, guys. You will, you, you will see a lot of things you're not supposed to see if you walk in fear, if you walk in doubt, if you walk in worry, if you don't walk according to what the truth of God says. His people perish for the lack of knowledge. And unfortunately, many have perished. Many are perishing. Many are sick for the lack of knowledge. We got to understand that the Lord is for us, that by his stripes we have been healed that through Christ we are redeemed from the curse of the law, that we are Jesus, that God is our protector, our deliverer, our healer, and our provider. He is our light and our salvation. Of whom shall we be afraid? Does that make sense to you guys? So just remember this truth. Learn. Read the New Testament. Start reading God's Word, especially if you're not working or going to school through these days because of uh, the, the quarantine, God. Start getting into the Bible like you never have and, and start reading. Start reading from Matthew. Read the New Testament and find out what it is that you're in. You're in a covenant with God. Find out what that covenant is about so that you can start walking by faith. The Bible says you've been justified, meaning you are the just. You are the right right? You've been justified. You are the righteous, right? Because of the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, you've been justified by faith in him. And now the Bible calls you and I just, and the Bible says that the just shall live by faith, must live by faith, right? It says walk by faith, not by sight. Why are we walking and making our decisions and, and, and basing our emotions on what we see? This is happening in this country. This is happening in this state. This is happening in our neighborhood. This is happening on social media. Why are you making your decisions and, and, and choosing whether to believe or whether to fear according to what you see when the Bible says walk by faith and not by sight? Amen? So we have to walk by faith because the just live by faith. And if you walk by faith, guess what? You're going to see the Lord's reward. You're going to see the blessings of the new covenant. You're going to see these things happening. God is a reward of those who diligently seek him. Amen. He's a reward of those. Without faith, you cannot please God. Amen. We got to walk by faith and you can't believe on something that you don't know. So you have to start getting to know what the word of God says. Get to know the, uh, what, what it says about the gospel, about the new covenant, about the God that you serve, the God that you're in covenant with you, the God that promises you things. Get to know that because God's people today are perishing for the lack of knowledge because they're fearing because of a lack of knowledge. They're afraid. They're worrying. They're doubting. They're not walking by faith because of a lack of knowledge. Let's get into the word. Let's stop looking at things, get into the word so that we can start knowing something. Once we know it, we can start what? Expecting it. And that's living by faith and not by what? By sight, regardless of what's going on in front of us, around us, behind us. Jesus is Lord and we're in covenant with God. Let's find out what this covenant brings so that we no longer perish. Amen. Paul had the ministry of the new covenant. We are in the new covenant. Let's start learning what this new covenant brings so that we can have that peace that surpasses all understanding, that peace that surpasses knowledge. Like, oh, I have knowledge of this happening. I have knowledge of this disease. I have knowledge of this going around. But God's peace surpasses that because I know the truth and the truth has set me free from that fear. Amen. Let's grow. Let's believe God. Let's get to know the truth and we will see what he promises. Amen. At the same time, keep those people in prayer who are going through it. Pray God's mercy. Pray God's healing. Pray God's patience. Pray God's healing on those who are suffering right now and going through it right now. And let's remember the ministry of the new covenant and the ministry of what? Reconciliation. 
Because there's a difference between being enemies of God and being at peace with God. And when you're at peace with God, things are supposed to look completely different. And that's what we got to know, to be set free. Amen? Love you guys. What's up, Roshni? Good to see you on here, Roshni. Bless you, bless you. Good to see you on here. My wife said it's very true. Bless you guys. What's up, Thomas and Felicia? Good preaching, bro. Thanks for coming on. Man, love you guys. Bless you guys. Um, I hope this helped you. Um, if you're just now joining in, go ahead and share this video. Um, or not, not share this video. If you watched it, share the video. If you're just not joining in, I'm about to stop right now and I'm about to upload it so that you can watch it from the very beginning. We must know the truth to be set free. God is the same God he was in the beginning, but there's a different covenant that he now makes with people through his son, Jesus Christ. His people can still perish because of, because of a lack of knowledge, because of a lack of knowledge. That lack of knowledge brings fear and expectancy of things that are not supposed to come on us. Amen. The Bible says we're supposed to renew our minds and we're supposed to be renewed in knowledge. So there's something for us to know. Not knowing the truth will hurt you even if you're saved. Okay. I know a lot of us were told all you got to do is confess Jesus. All you got to do is start going to church and everything will look different. No, no, no. Once you're born again, you have to find out and allow the Lord and allow his leaders, right? The body of Christ to help you understand what it is that you have entered into the new covenant, who it is you've become in Christ Jesus. Amen. So watch this from the beginning. Share this. If you think somebody you know needs this, um, if you want a free prayer shirt, they're still available. We're running out. So, you know, they're, they're still available for now. So I'm going to post the link um, to our free prayer shirts. Okay. Um, we also have a, a, a brand new blog that we're still, um, that we're still putting out brand new content, fresh new content, um, too. So check out the blog. I'm putting, I'm putting all the links on the comments right now to this Facebook live video. Okay. So we have blogs coming out, um, brand new blogs. We're going to start throwing them out there to help people grow. That's our mission. Growing in Christ, growing in Christ, growing in Christ. We got to see people start maturing. We got to start, start seeing people understanding the word of God more so that they can start living it, applying it, bearing good fruit. God has called us to bear fruit to him, to do good works. We are supposed to be soldiers of Christ. Come on. So there's some, there's a growth that needs to take place, a maturing that needs to take place. And this blog is going to help you do that for free, of course. All these blogs are free. So check out the blog link and um also check out my youtube channel i just um i just made a whole bunch of new content for youtube and i'm ready to start putting it out and uh to continue putting it out um i have you know praise god you know i have a little more time um now these days um so things are things things are working out so that i can start putting out more content out there on the blog on the youtube channel so check our youtube channel free videos on there to help you grow in christ as well and um that's pretty much all for now um anybody have anything to say any questions anything like that everybody good all right what's up um julie bless you julie thanks for joining in bless you bless you bless you Thomas, uh, Fearson, what's up, man? I'll, I just joined. I'll go rewatch. Yeah, rewatch it. Rewatch it. We gotta know, we gotta know something. We gotta know something. Amen. There's a truth for us to know so we can see freedom from the things we have been freed from. Okay. There's a covenant we've entered in and we have to get to know it to start expecting it because the just shall live by faith, right? And faith is just like fear. If you walk in it, you're going to see. The manifestation of that expectation. It just depends on which one you're expecting. Don't be like Job. Amen. Be like Christ. Amen. Love you guys. Bless you. Share this video if you think it'll help somebody. Check out the blog. Check out the YouTube channel. And if you want a free prayer shirt, we have them available from, I think, small. Is it extra small? Small, definitely, to XL. Um, it may be extra small, but look on the website. The link's right there. It'll show you what sizes are available. Love you guys. Love you, Fearson. Love you, Julie. Bless you. Take care.